Hi, this is Ellie Fishman. Welcome to part three of three on CT of the adrenal gland. And we briefly left off last time just mentioning about bilateral adrenal masses. And so let's talk about that. Again, in terms of being able to distinguish different lesions as to etiology, bilateral does help. Of course, the problem is anywhere from incidental adenomas to metastasis to pheos to lymphoma can all be bilateral. So it's helpful, but not all that helpful. Primary lymphoma of the adrenal gland is rarely unilateral and more commonly bilateral, but in those cases, the adrenals are particularly large, and because they're infiltrated, there is an increased incidence of adrenal insufficiency, so that might be the presentation. And this article by Jacobs also makes that same point, that lymphomatous involvement of the adrenal gland during the course of lymphoma is common, but as a primary presentation of adrenal insufficiency, it's relatively rare. So, but it is something to think about. So let's look at the things we think about with bilateral. So metastasis is the classic, right? It's the most common malignant adrenal tumor, variable size and appearance with attenuation values often depending on the primary tumor. If you ask me what's the most common sites of METS, I would say lung and breast and kidney and melanoma. And there is some features which can be helpful. So for example, bilateral, non-contrast, who knows what this is, but you can see they both enhance. I guess theoretically, you could say pheochromocytoma, that would be possible, but the patient is missing the right kidney, had known clear cell renal cell carcinoma, and so this is an example of bilateral adrenal metastasis. Now, again, bilateral adrenal mets vascular lesions. Again, you could talk about pheo, the vascularity. It could be other tumors besides renal cell, but renal cell is the one we think about the most. So another example here, patient had renal cell with ablation, bilateral large adrenal masses. It could be melanoma, though melanoma usually doesn't enhance. This has some enhancement, but this patient had known renal cell and you could see this was metastatic renal cell carcinoma. When you look at METs, we typically think of METs like I'm showing you here, bilateral adrenal masses, but sometimes they're smaller. And you can see, for example, in this case, this patient had bilateral lesions, but they were small, okay? So you don't need to have large masses to be metastatic. Other tumors, hepatoma, I've seen a number of cases of a hepatoma like this in a cirrhotic liver. Look at the size of those adrenal masses. With no history, could this be metastatic renal cell? Yes. Could this be primary lymphoma? I guess yes. This was metastatic hepatoma. And this patient had mets to both adrenal glands. You also see a large metastatic lesion to the left pelvis with bone destruction. Again, going back to the adrenal gland and looking at renal cell. This is a good example showing you METs to the right adrenal that are vascular, but also showing you METs to the periodic region are also vascular. So one of the classic things in looking at a lesion, when you see vascular nodes, when you see vascular adrenal, you better be thinking about renal cell. Obviously, you've had a nephrectomy, it makes life very easy. And it's typically not going to be papillary renal cell carcinoma, it's going to be clear cell renal cell carcinoma. If you ask me what gives you the biggest METs, I showed you some really good examples of renal, so that's possible. But when I see round and large, I think about melanoma. Here's the non-contrast scans, large bilateral adrenal masses. You can go through a differential. Here it is with contrast, not enhancing on arterial phase to any great degree. You can see the large bilateral masses nicely seen. This was metastatic melanoma. When you go in and you look at the uh, lesions with contrast, this is the venous phase. There's some enhancement, there's some irregularity, but it's not like hypervascular like that renal cell. So again, something to consider. And just to show you again, I'm gonna show you, here's another example of metastatic to the right adrenal. And here's an example of bilateral solid masses, could be melanoma, but the necrotic process, the enhancement, very easy to go in this patient with bilateral masses into renal cell carcinoma. It's interesting when you look at this case, and I showed you the same example before, but now I'm showing you the washout values. 
When you look at the washout, it's low density. So it's really arterial vascular. Maybe it hangs around for a little bit, but if you were looking, uh, it could be a problematic if you want to say, could this be uh, an adenoma? Let's say you were thinking something crazy like that. The enhancement is too great for an adenoma. But if you only measured absolute washouts, you can be fooled. So we typically talk about FIOs as faking you out with washout percentages, but the same can be true with metastasis, particularly from renal cell carcinoma. Now, pheochromocytoma is often considered one of the great mimickers, variable clinical presentation and pathologic findings in CT imaging. We usually talk about a patient with hypertension, but we are seeing more pheos detected incidentally than being symptomatic sent for imaging. Peak incidence, age 40 to 50, can be multicentric in 10% of patients. Remember the rule of 10, 10% are extra adrenal, 90% are the organ of zircocondyl, 10% are malignant, 10% are bilateral. Again, lab values are critical. You're not really going to see a FIO when the plasma catecholamine levels and the urine VMA and metanephrine levels are not elevated. So it's not a perfect finding, but usually is the case. 90% of these tumors are sporadic, but 10% of pheos are part of a syndrome. Again, another 10%er. Von Hippel-Lindau, MEN type 2, neurofibromatosis, and pheoparaganglioma syndromes are all things that are associated with increased incidence of pheochromocytoma. We did publish this article a number of years back in 40 of 57 patients an adrenal pheo was detected on imaging study without suspicion of an adrenal lesion. Uh, many endocrinologists will say the reason you need to work up every incidental adrenal lesion is because maybe you're picking up these things like pheos that you may not expect. So it always is going to be a challenge. And again, this high percent of incidental pheos is important to remember as you look at adrenals on a day-to-day -day basis. If you look at some of the findings, pheos are typically round and oval. Usually there are three centimeters to four, but they can be up to 10 and as little as one. One is typically in the syndromic cases. When they get larger, they can be necrotic. And the various features have earned the nickname of imaging chameleon, okay? So it can mimic many different lesions. About 5% of incidentalomas of pheos in this one article by Kim, though I think it's a lot lower because the percent of adenomas is just so high. And again, the incidental rate is indeed very high. It used to be there was a concern for pheos that you would have a reaction of hypertensive crisis giving IV contrast. You'd have to do alpha blocking, but that was only true with ionic contrast material. Non-ionic is no issue. So what's the CT findings? Well, calcifications occur in about 10% of cases. They're typically hypervascular on early phase imaging and wash out. Now remember, these get very vascular and wash out significantly, at least on a percentage basis. So we have the rule, anything enhances above 120, you can't use the washout value to say it's an adenoma because a pheo can sit in that category. Now, not every pheo is above 120. Some are below 120, so it can be somewhat challenging. Good example here, look at the right adrenal mass. Could be a lot of things non-contrast. Arterial could be metastatic renal. I guess theoretically you think of primary adrenal carcinoma, though it's small unless the patient was syndromic or had some uh, hyperfunction. And then you say, but what else could it be? And this is a pheochromocytoma, nicely shown also on the coronal imaging. And you can see how it does indeed wash out. Another case, you look at this patient's left adrenal mass. There it is with contrast. It's enhancing but necrotic. There it is again on the coronal view, central necrosis. It's always a challenge, where do you measure the density of this lesion? Do you measure it centrally in the necrotic area, or do you measure it in the solid area? You need to measure centrally, but this is just a good example showing you how these pheos can be necrotic centrally. Here it is with cinematic rendering, and at times people think pheos are hypervascular throughout, but I think the key word is they're inhomogeneous in many cases, and you may have in this case central necrosis. 
Another example, here's a pheo, sensual necrosis, hypervascularity in the periphery, nicely shown in the coronal view, pushing down on the kidney and showing you very much some of the vascularity, some cystic spaces when we look at the venous imaging. Another example, look at the patient's right adrenal mass. Again, very vascular, central necrosis, pushing on the kidney, prominent vascularity. Again, you gotta think about a pheochromocytoma here. And here's just a couple more images of that. So vascular, you could think also in this case about a primary adrenal carcinoma. You could think about metastasis, but pheo is something you need to think about. Now, sometimes it's hard. What about this case? It's slightly vascular. It's not an adenoma, we know that. Interestingly, it gets more vascular with time. The central necrosis on the 3D, which you can see, but you can think of a lot of possibilities here, but this was a pheochromocytoma. So pheos can be cystic. And the granddaddy of all is this case. Look how large this mass is. Look how cystic it is. Could this be a lymphoma? Unlikely unilateral and cystic. Adenocarcinoma, primary adrenal adenocarcinoma. I think that's a good possibility. Could it be a big bleed that you missed? Hemorrhage, old hemorrhage. This was a pheochromocytoma. Look at the size of the lesion thickened wall. So I do want to make the point that it's important to remember that pheochromocytomas can be cystic and can be challenging. And here's another example. Again, looks like almost like hemangioma, peripheral puddling. There's so much cystic components present, it's kind of a little bit tricky to me. Here it is again, the coronal view, peripheral enhancement, so it's not going to be an adenoma. It's not going to be a simple cyst. Pheo. Another example. Bilateral masses is interesting. The one on the left is more solid. I mean, the one on the left is more cystic. The one on the right is more solid. Uh, this was bilateral pheos in a patient with neurofibromatosis. Most cases of bilateral pheos, patients are syndromic. I will also say that the smallest pheos are in patients who are syndromic. But this is just a nice example showing you the same lesion both adrenals have different appearances from solid on the right to cystic on the left. And here it is in the coronal display. So it's something to learn about the spectrum of involvement, but also the spectrum involvement even within the same patient. Just a very nice example of peripheral enhancement, central necrosis, pheochromocytoma. This patient at von Hippel-Lindau has a neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. You can see the enhancement of the head. You also can see the small one centimeter vascular lesion, right adrenal gland. That's going to be classic for a pheochromocytoma. Even without the history of Vana Belindo, I still would have gone with pheo. But you can see multi-organ involvement with syndromes, and one of them may be the adrenal gland. Very nicely shown here. You see the lesion in the coronal. I do like coronal imaging in the adrenal because sometimes you can tell something's a definite pheo because pheos often come off the crux of the adrenal gland. They don't infiltrate like lymphoma, but they kind of come off the bottom of the gland. That can indeed be very helpful. And you can see in this case, I've also used, besides the coronals, I've used cinematic rendering to really show you the enhancement of that mass. Now, when you do a suspected pheochromocytoma, you always concentrate on the adrenals. But as we said, 10% are extra adrenal. So you want to make sure on arterial phase imaging, particularly the non-contrast scan show normal adrenals that just scan through the pelvis. And then in this case, you would have found the mass at the bifurcation of the aorta, the so-called organ of zirconcondyl, and that was an, a, a pheochromocytoma, just a beautiful example. And here's another one with normal adrenal glands, and there's a large mass uh, at the aortic bifurcation just near there, which is the organ of zirconcondyl level, and this was a pheochromocytoma. You can see the vascularity. I guess you can think about some type of other sarcoma. You can think about a neurogenic tumor, but location, hypertension, just perfect for pheochromocytoma. And I make the point that you want to look through the bladder. We have seen a number of cases of pheochromocytomas in the bladder. And yes, I know if you show me this case, I would say bladder cancer every time. But in a patient who's hypertensive and the lab's point of pheo, we scan through the organ of zirconcondyl and the pelvis. We give water as PO so the bladder's distended. 
and that's a beautiful example of a mildly vascular pheochromocytoma in the bladder. The uh, typical history is when the patient urinates, that's when they get symptoms of hypertension. So it's kind of classic. Uh, extra adrenal paragangliomas, homogeneous or heterogeneous enhancement, a wide size range of 1 to 20 centimeters, location from the carotid body to the aorta pulmonary region, posterior mediastinum, organ of zircocondyl, and the pelvis, typically the bladder. So I've shown you a lot of things over these three lectures. We've looked at a lot of different case studies. We looked at why CT is so valuable, how CT plays a major role in detecting and defining incidentalomas. Uh, we talked about how unilateral versus bilateral can be helpful, but everything is sitting in this idea of being able to look at the lesion, look at its appearance, look at its signature. Now, just to let you know, we have many apps on the Apple Store and one of our apps is on the adrenal gland. It's a checklist which really works out very well, kind of walks you through different decision points, has a lot of really good images and a lot of text. Also to let you know that on the teaching file of a CT is us, there are thousands of adrenal cases with their answers and there's lots more. And with that, I thank you for your attention and have a great day. Bye-bye. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website ctisus.com for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.